Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Hillbilly Military Modeling here and in this video we will be doing painting part one of our current project which is the um, Soviet light tank BT-7 by Zvezda in 135th scale. So let's go ahead and jump right in. This is where we left the vehicle in our last video. So it's time to disassemble everything for painting. Now I left the top hatches on the turret separate because they're going to be painted a different color. And I like to use alligator clips so that I don't have to touch the parts um, while we're painting. And we're going to remove the running gear and the tracks. So I've left the tracks not glued to the road wheels because it's just easier to paint. Alligator clips are good for things like these axles. And I do use these tapered uh, wooden dowels for our road wheels and our idlers and our drive sprockets. I also find low tack uh, painter's tape. This is painter's masking tape. Really useful for small parts that you can't really use an alligator clip on or a wooden dowel. So I'm folding the edges on it here so that the tape doesn't coil back up on itself. And this tape doesn't leave any residue on the parts, so we can just stick those right to the tape. And that'll hold them into place while we spray them with our airbrush. As you can see, it sticks pretty good. <laughs> However, I have blown some off before, so <laughs> you got to be on the lookout for that. So the first color we're going to use is going to be this uh, German Panzer Gray. Um, this will be the base color for our pre-shading. So this is going to be a pre-shade paint job that we're doing here. And uh, we just want to make sure that we cover the entire surface of the model and all the other little parts, the road wheels, um, idlers, drive sprockets, and I'm even going to paint the tracks in this gray color. And that gives us the opportunity to take a look at uh, the build and make sure that there's nothing that we didn't sand out or we have any seams where uh, it needs some attention and we can go ahead and fix that before we go on with the uh, with the rest of the painting. So I chose the German Panzer Gray because I'm looking to have a little bit softer transition between uh, the white which we're going to use later in our pre-shading and the base color. So I, I use the Panzer Gray instead of the black which I usually use. And the most important thing is make sure we cover everything so that way if our base color which is going to be the uh, Russian green uh, 4BO. Uh, if we miss a little spot somewhere then it just looks like a shadow and it doesn't ruin uh, the finish on the vehicle. The next color we're going to use is going to be this uh, Vallejo white uh, and of course these paints I am thinning for my airbrush. You'll have to do that for your airbrush. My mixture is about 60% paint and 40% of this uh, airbrush flow improver that I'm using here. So in our appreciating here I got to thinking about color modulation and that's the that's the process where the vehicle is already painted and you go back in and you usually mix up a lighter color and you put light on high spots and you leave it darker on low spots and I was thinking we could probably do this pre-shading because I just think it's easier for me um, to come in and fix a pre-shade base than to try to fix a paint job where I either got the shade wrong <laughs> you know so this being green you could easily uh, get the wrong shade of green and the vehicle look funny so on the vertical surfaces I painted just the top portion and then on the lower portion of the hull here I'm doing the center fill technique 
Uh, most of this is probably not going to be seen. Uh, we'll be doing the weathering underneath the fenders here. But uh, it's there just in case um, in case it shows through the weathering. So I'm also doing here on the front of the vehicle, I'm just using a little piece of cardstock to kind of keep overspray from the top of the vehicle on the top of the hull there. And yeah, I'm having trouble holding it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but <laughs> so the ideal is here is to have the white up high and then we'll move down to the next panel and you'll see here in a second kind of what it looks like yeah now so on the fenders I'm just doing the center fill method here and I'll do that on the um, all the horizontal surfaces and the top surfaces of the vehicle and that's kind of what we come up with. That's, that's what it looks like pre-shaded. So here's the color scheme that I'm going to be using. The, it'll be Russian green 4BO and I'm going to leave the hatches on top of the turret white. So we're going to mix up a little bit of this uh, Russian green 4BO. This is a Vallejo acrylic. So what we want to do is to make sure that we're just putting this on really light and the way I do that is I keep the airbrush moving really quick across the model so that we don't have any concentration of the uh, green in any one spot. And we're just going to keep covering over the area. Now acrylics dry really fast and I'll get a base color on and then we'll move on to uh, different portions of the vehicle do the bottom and then we'll come back to the turret and uh, we'll put another coat on and the secret here to allow your color modulation to look right is right before uh, you get it the way you think you want it you need to stop painting okay it's usually that last little bit uh, <laughs> that uh, causes you to oversaturate your pre-shading with your base color so that's kind of what you need to do is stop before you think it's right and then it'll probably be right because <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to want this pre-shading to come through our weathering effects and I really enjoy this process here especially this stage of painting because it allows us to see our uh, base green color start to develop um, with the pre-shading underneath and we're starting to see the faded areas and that's really enjoyable to see that come out now like I said make sure you don't oversaturate any particular area on the model just keep the paintbrush moving now I did make a mistake uh, and that mistake was in painting the turret I left the hull in the paint booth and that actually made the the paint on the hull a little bit rougher because the particles were drying and falling on the uh, on the lower hull and yeah but I mean it's nothing we can't deal with but don't do that. Make sure that you, you pull that out of the paint booth and don't spray over top of it. So we're going to go ahead and do our road wheels too. Uh, we appreciated that as well. So what we have here is our color modulation in pre-shading and I think it came out pretty good. You can see we got the dark on low and the light on high and it worked for our fuel tanks as well. So it's, that's a technique that I think I'm going to try to develop a little bit more. That way I don't have to worry about mixing up different shades of green and it not coming out right. But uh, you can see the uh, center fill method on the uh, flat horizontal surfaces. And we also did that on the turret of course. 
Uh, okay, I'm satisfied with that. On to the next. So, here we're going to use that Panzer Gray. And this is the airbrush mixture. So it's, it's really thin. And we're going to come back and touch up all the rubber on our road wheels. Now on the Russian BT-7, the not only are the road wheels have a rubber tire, but our idlers have rubber tires, and also our sprocket has rubber on it as well. Which, in my research, I found to be kind of different. I didn't know that about a BT-7, but uh, you're just going to want to put it on there, and, and it, it being so thin, uh, I only needed one coat to cover the green overspray. Now we're going to take this Model Masters Acryl Wood. It's an acrylic. And we're going to paint uh, the handles of our shovels. Normally I paint the metal first and then I come back in with the wood, but um, the, the wooden handles are really hard to reach because they're under the exhaust. Having it to do over, I probably would have left the exhaust off. And now I'm going to go back to the Panzer Gray. I'm going to use that as the metal base color for uh, the shovels. And I do have to put two coats of this on the shovels because there was uh, brush strokes left in it, which I needed to take care of. So now we're going to look at the exhaust real quick while our shovels are drying. This is Model Master Rust. This is an acrylic as well. And we're just going to paint our exhaust pipes. Now this is going to give us a base rust color for uh, weathering our exhaust uh, a little bit later on. Just want to make sure that we get it on there and it's uh, fairly smooth. You don't have to worry too much about it being smooth because a little bit of texture is good on exhaust. So now I want to take a little bit of this Vallejo Black acrylic and a real fine brush. And we're going to do a little bit of detail painting on our jacks. So once I get everything where I can <laughs> see it and the camera can see it too. <laughs> but the jacks set in a metal sleeve, which is a bracket that holds the jacks onto uh, the back of the vehicle here. So we're just going to paint the portion of the jack which sticks out and I also go in and I, my hands were in the way and you couldn't really see it but I paint the bases of the jacks as well with this Vallejo black around those brackets that we made and put on kind of give a little bit of detail there so next we're going to use this XF56 metallic gray this is a Tamiya acrylic and our headlights don't have any lens detail so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to paint a round headlight <laughs> it's not defined uh, in the molding where the headlight and the bezel for the headlight are separate so just trying to give the effect of a headlight with a bezel. Now the other option would have been to have drilled these out and make a lens for it, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so, all right, now we have this burnt umber oil um, artist paint. I place it on cardboard and I let it set for quite a while uh, while I was doing other painting. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. So the cardboard allows it to uh, drain away the linseed oil that's in the oil paint 
and we're going to use this testers uh, enamel thinner as a carrier and that way we'll be able to apply these pigments these oil paint pigments uh, to the wood on our handles on our tools so the only real tools that are on this whole vehicle is two shovels and two jacks and that's it so we're just going to uh, apply the pigments right over that wood color that we painted earlier and just want to make sure that we get the pigments on there and as you can see here it is difficult to reach up underneath the exhaust so it would have made it easier if I had left the exhaust off and we could have weathered the exhaust separately and then attached it to the tank but I didn't so this is this is <laughs> this is what we're gonna do so after a few minutes uh, I think I, I waited about 10 or 15 minutes to allow the uh, thinner to evaporate off of the uh, oil pigments I come back in with a clean brush and using the same enamel thinner we're just going to streak these pigments and try to make it look like wood grain so it takes a little bit of practice to do this but I think it gives a better impression of a wooden handle than any other method that I've found so far so I like using that So next I'm going to make up some little paper shields here for our shovels. And this will keep me from getting enamel paint on our Russian green. And we're going to be using this flat steel enamel by testers. And we're going to come in and simulate uh, wear where the paint's been worn off of the shovels from use. So it's kind of a real dry brushing type technique. And we're going to come back in after we get uh, our flat steel down. And kind of touch it up. We're going to use this enamel thinner to do that. So we clean our brush really good, get as much of the pigment off of it as we can, and then we'll come back in with a slightly damp brush and do a little bit of blending and a little bit of removal. <laughs> it's just kind of making it look like it's worn. Now these shovels are really square, so it's kind of hard to figure out exactly where we need to do this, but I think we get a pretty good result in the end. Alright, I'm kind of satisfied with that. So now we're going to turn our attention to the exhaust. I'm going to use these craft paints here. So this is black. I'm going to use burnt umber. Some vanilla cream. And we got red rust. And it's a different shade of rust than what we base coated our exhaust with. So I did make a paper shield for that. And here's our four acrylic craft paint colors. And I thinned those a little bit with the airbrush flow improver. That'll give us more working time. And we're going to be using the sponge chipping method to apply these. So we're going to use the uh, burnt umber color 
to give us a little bit of color variation from the base rust color that we had previously painted on. And just kind of randomly do this. Uh, pretty much just concentrating right now around the brackets, uh, the, the little loops that hold these exhausts into place. And then we'll go down the rest of the exhaust kind of randomly and then a little bit around the tips. Now I keep using the same sponge for this entire process, just blot it off real good. Now we're going to use this vanilla cream. I could have used white, but I thought white would be too stark of a color because this is a pretty dark vehicle, so I didn't want it to look too far out of uh, the, the color contrast to be too much. And if you look at rust, you'll see that sometimes that you have this kind of a white color. So we're just doing it around the tips and the elbows were high heat, you know, in a couple of spots here and there. So the next color we come in with is going to be our black. And we're just going to go over top of our uh, vanilla cream color and just some rust pitting detail. And then the next color we're going to use will be um, our red rust. And it's kind of mixed really thin. Um, it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, sort of like a filter. And that'll tone down, uh, especially the vanilla cream. And we just rush chip over top of it. So if it looks too bright, I'm kind of filtering it out with the uh, thin rust color. Now this is different than the techniques I normally use on exhaust, but um, I think it's looking pretty decent. It's the first time I've tried this method. So with the paper removed, we can see our different rust colors against the green. I think it looks pretty decent. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. Do you do you like this type of rust painting or do you prefer them? Uh, the other way I've been doing it is the uh, pigments. Uh, using dry pigments to simulate the rust. And so that will have to do it for this video. Uh, next video we'll be finishing up the painting on this uh, Soviet light tank BT-7. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys and I love hearing from you and I appreciate all your comments and I promise to answer you back uh, as soon as I see your comments. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, why not go ahead and subscribe? If you like the content, hit that notification bell so you'll see the next video when I post it. And that will wrap this one up. Uh, you guys stay safe and thanks for watching.